Hamilton's Enderley is one of the poorest neighbourhoods in the country and has been for 60 years. As part of an RNZ series exploring the country as its population nears 5 million, Max Toll wanted to know how a neighbourhood could be left behind as a city and a country changed around it. He went to Enderley on a rainy day and found people who will never give up on the hood. Oh yeah, a lot of whānau. As you get older, you kind of start to see your community in a different way. You know, you start thinking about how we used to live in the papakainga sense of the thing. You had the, the marae there, the dining room, you had the chapel, and then you had the whānau living there, all on, on one site. For 50 years, Annie Williams has lived in Enderley, known locally as Poet's Corner, because its streets are named after writers like Shakespeare and Keats. She knows everyone, and everyone knows her, and she'll probably never leave. Yet, Annie isn't oblivious to the suburb's problems. Nine of her 12 children have moved to Australia to escape its poverty and find a better life. They started going away because it was poor living. The poverty's still there. Yeah. I, I don't even think that's even going to change. Across Hamilton, about 1,000 homes are under construction, a new $2.1 billion expressway is being built that will connect the city with the Bombay Hills, while a $3.3 billion inland port will create about 11,000 new jobs. Yet in Poets' Corner, there are empty, decaying homes and overgrown sections where two-storey state houses were demolished more than a decade ago. The suburb has always had one of the largest concentrations of state housing in the country. Charlotte Retty has lived in the same home on Byron Road since 1962. It is just a horrible circle of, of nothing's changed, essentially. That, I think, is due socially and politically, the will to make that change, the will to integrate families, fully integrate families and provide opportunities for them to, to get out of that lifestyle, if you like, is all, is all talk. She's lost count of the times that fences, including hers, have been smashed in fights. I absolutely hate the idea of dumping people in areas for the purpose of housing alone, where there's, there's going to be no opportunities for them to break out of that cycle. Poets' Corner has always been synonymous with crime. Famously, in 2007, the post office refused to deliver to the suburb after a gang shootout. The police say things have improved in the past few years, but Alvina Edwards, a Maori tutor who has lived in Poets Corner for 20 years, disagrees. About a year ago, she heard a tapping on her front door and opened it to find a fully camouflaged man holding a rifle. He put the gun to her head and pulled the trigger. The gun clicked. It was probably a scare thing or wrong address, I don't know. My son thought I was going to die. I thought I was going to die and my children would die. And I put it down to her as a Māori woman, because if that happened to a Pākehā woman in a rich suburb, I tell you now, it would be splattered all over the, the news. And still, many of those living in Poets' Corner will never give up hope. It is their home and their community and something they can call their own, despite its flaws. Charlotte Retty's children call it the hood, but what was once an embarrassing term when they were young is now one they refer to with pride. They're proud to be from the hood. It's about the people, yes. It's about, it's about the people, it's about teaching parents to be parents. It's about teaching, you know, the skills for women, the skills that are needed for men. It is about those things. And, and yes, people sometimes need a hand up. It's hard when they're continually being rubbished as second class, but I think there's hope. And I think you have to have hope, otherwise you'd, you'd die thinking, oh my goodness, there's nothing good ever going to come out of all of this. For Jack Point, Max Toll.